This is part two, so if you haven't seen part one, you can click here and watch it. But if you have, then here we go. In France, on the 6th of January, we traditionally eat la galette des rois. What this is, is a cake, and in the north of France, we have um, la galette, which is made out of puff pastry, and with frangipan, which is a mixture of eggs, butter, um, almonds, and sugar. And uh, in the south of France, we have le gâteau des rois, and this is a brioche in the shape of a crown, and then it's got candied fruit inside. Um, and on top as well. Um, and it is also celebrated in other countries such as Switzerland, uh, Lebanon, um, Quebec, so in other French speaking countries. Um, and the tradition originates from the idea that the three wise men on the 6th of January came to um, visit the newborn Jesus in Bethlehem, and so they, this is the celebration of the kings. So there is a whole um, tradition around the way in which you have to eat la galette des rois. First of all, you have to ask the youngest child of the family to go under the table, and then he has to decide who has which slice of the cake. So the person cutting the cake will uh, cut um, the number of slices which corresponds to the number of people. Traditionally you would actually cut an extra slice, which was la part du pauvre, which means that you would save it for a poor person, um, and then when they would come around um, town then you would give it to the person, or you would share it amongst the poor. Um, but what happens with the slices, and the reason why the youngest person goes under the table, um, is because there is a charm hidden inside the cake, and someone needs to get the charm. So this charm, in French, is called la fève, and traditionally um, this is a porcelain figure of the nativity. And um, nowadays, however, we can have all kinds of charms, um, and this year, for example, I got some ballerina shoes as I got the fev in the cake. Um, and um, bakers, they use any, any type of uh, charms nowadays to make it not just a uh, religious aspect here. So when you get la fev, you are either made king or queen, and you bec you, then you will have this crown that you can wear for the rest of the day, but you also have to pick a king or a queen um, for the day. And now a bit of history. So the Romans celebrated this tradition with La Galette des Rois, and um, because they celebrated the, festi the festival of the winter solstice, and they decided that they needed to reverse the karma, to have good karma, what they needed to do is reverse the roles. And so they would have uh, one person that was a slave made into the king of the day. And that meant that any, uh, they had a slave that would be allowed to do whatever they want and could give orders to the king, for example. But then by the end of the day, he either went back to the status of a slave or was killed. Um, and uh, after that, uh, later on, for example, Louis, Louis XIV, he was um, uh, famous for actually making women queens of the day on um, the 6th of January. Um, and uh, Louis, of, uh, Louis the 16th actually abolished this celebration afterwards. Um, and a few times uh, the tradition of the La Galette des Rois was, um, was uh, challenged because of the status of the religious aspect, but also um, the whole monarchy aspect. So, for example, during the revolution, there was this question of whether we can still go on celebrating kings and queens. Um, so. Uh, and today as well in schools there is the question as to whether we can still uh, give this to children because it's a, re a religious ceremony. The 15th of March is very important in Hungarian history because the revolution of 1848 started on that very day. In Budapest there were a couple of poets and um, well famous people at the time who thought that we should fight against the Austrians who were ruling over Hungary at the time and um, one of the very famous poets of the time, Petrofi Sándor, wrote um, a poem and stood on the top of the stairs outside the National Museum of Hungary. 
and uh, read out his new poem, which he called Namzati Dol, meaning um, like national song. And he read it out to the crowd. And also the 12 points they were requesting from the Austrian government. And um, they were fighting for our freedom to become independent. And uh, nowadays we celebrate this day by uh, school plays and wearing a little brush kind of thing, we call them kokada, and it's the same colors as the Hungarian flag. And uh, that was the symbol of the revolution in 1848. And uh, yeah, we don't have to go to work, which is great. So the other festival that's celebrated by Malaysian Chinese is the Dragon Boat Festival, we call Duan Wu Jie. It's celebrated on the fifth day of the fifth month of the lunar calendar. So historically, what happened was a governmental official called Chu Yuan, who is like a scholar of sorts. So he was really well respected and liked by the citizens and the emperor alike. But his rivals or colleagues were really jealous of him and they talked bad about him and made the emperor distrust him and he fell out of favor. So in depression, depression, depressed, I guess. So he kind of just committed suicide by jumping into the river, uh, then known as the Mi Luo Jiang. And what happened was when the citizens found out about it, they took the boat out to try to rescue him and they tossed rice into the river to kind of please the river dragons so that nothing bad would happen and so what happened after that which became a custom was the dragon boat race to kind of represent uh, the time when the people took the boat out to try to rescue Chu Yuan and we also eat this thing called the rice dumpling in Mandarin Zhongzi and what we do is that we have this bamboo field uh, rice bamboo leaf that is wrapped around cooked glutinous rice and sometimes we have the salty version with meat or the sweet version we eat it with some kind of sweet sauce called kaya which is made of pandan leaves and um, sugar and what happens is that historically what we think it represents is that it is thrown into the river so that the fishes would eat the bamboo rice zhongzi instead of eating the corpse of chu yuan and that's why we have the rice dumplings you may know it as Shrove Tuesday, you may know it as Carnival, you may even know it as Fashing, but in England we know it as Pancake Day. So this day is all about pancakes. It comes right before Lent, so in Lent you traditionally give up sweet food, so you have to get rid of your eggs, your butter, your sugar, and so pancakes are the perfect thing to use this up. And on this day it's traditional to have pancake races, where you have to race while flipping pancakes to get to the other end. And when I was at university, we actually broke the Guinness World Record with the most people flipping pancakes at the same time. So there was 890 of us flipping pancakes for 30 seconds. This is part two, so if you haven't seen top one, click here and you can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> La galette des rois, which means that we eat some cake. That sounds stupid. People and also by the emperor. So he's. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to. I tried to. <laughs> Hi, so we hope that you've enjoyed our video. If you would like to comment on any of the traditions or festivals that we talked about, or any of your own, please do so below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more from the Forking Tomatoes!